I get asked all the time by people, they say, Tyler, I'm dead broke inside my contracting business, what should I do? In this video, I'll try to take the last four years of me going from being basically broke in my own concrete business to now making well over six figures a year, I'll try to take the top five things that I've learned and condense them down so that way hopefully you can do it in either a shorter amount of time or make it a lot easier for you. If you don't know me, my name is Tyler Link. I own a concrete business and a landscaping business that does a little under $4 million a year in revenue. And I also own a consulting business slash coaching business just for concrete contractors, where I help concrete contractors grow and scale their business to doing at least $3 million in revenue. I make these videos because it was really hard for me to scale my own business. And so the whole goal of these videos is just simply to make it easier for you and your business along the way. Hope it helps. All right, getting right into it. The number one thing that I would do is invest in skills. The absolute best part about acquiring new skills is that no one can take them away from you. So even if you fail in your business, or if you have to restart for whatever reason, let's just say you have a family emergency and you have to dig up your roots and restart your business all the way in a new state or somewhere completely different, the nice part is the only thing that for sure cannot be taken away from you is the skills that you learn. This is why you normally hear stories of rich people who may, in the middle of their career, lost everything but despite of losing everything, they're able to completely bounce back and maybe not even bounce back to where they were before, but completely bypass where they were before. We see this happen time and time again. And the number one reason that rich people are able to do this is because they've taken so much time, energy, and probably money to invest in their own knowledge and skills. So that way it really, the outside world doesn't matter because they always have the knowledge of how to make money. You know, I once heard someone tell me and uh, this was kind of like one of those moments that was a complete like mind blow for me is they said, hey, the ignorance that you have of not knowing how to make a million or billion dollars technically costs you that. And I really started thinking about that. So if you think about it, your ignorance of not knowing how to make a million dollars a year technically costs you a million dollars a year because you're not able to earn that simply because you don't know how. And so the number one thing that you should be investing in, especially if you're broke in your business, the highest return on investment is investing in your skills above anything else. There are so many ways to acquire skills. One is exactly what you're doing right now is watching YouTube videos. The cool thing about YouTube videos is you're able to basically dissect information from people like me who may be just a couple steps ahead of you in the game of contracting and then basically take what I've learned and apply them right away so hopefully you can get to where I'm at as fast as possible. There's obviously books, there's courses, there's like live events, there's coaching programs, there's so many things and a lot of people won't bat an eye about dropping like $100,000 over four years on college but then when it comes to like a high paid coaching program let's say like 20k they totally freak out and I'm just telling you guys I have done multiple of those and I also went to college and I'll tell you what I learned at college was nowhere near as impactful as what I learned in coaching programs or live events or really anything. Here's the one thing to really stay away from though when it comes to investing in yourself and skills is don't be a lifelong student. I see people all the time where they have like this basically mental masturbation and what they do is they're always buying new books and new programs and new courses but then their life doesn't really change. And then what I realize is they have all the satisfaction from basically learning the skill, but they never actually apply it. So don't be a lifelong student. Basically just find a program of something that can for sure help you out right now and dive all in. And whatever that program is telling you to do, remember you're paying that program, whoever you're like trying to learn from, whether it's a book or YouTube or whatever, you're at minimum, even in YouTube, you're paying just so you know, you're just paying with attention. You may not be paying with money but it's still your attention that you could have been spent otherwise, okay? But you should be not trying to learn everything. You should be trying to learn one thing and learning it really well and then implementing. I fall victim to this all the time too, and over the years I've really learned to not buy maybe as much volume of say books, but I pick out like one really good book and I'll read it over and over and over again until I fully get it and I, it's fully implemented. What type of skills are the highest paying? You should learn how to market, you should learn how to sell, and you should learn how to lead, okay? If you learn how to basically market, get people to call you, you learn how to sell those leads, and then you learn how to lead others, basically lead a team, you will be unstoppable. All right, moving on to the next thing, which number two is I would examine very closely of the people that you spend the most time with. I know we hear this all the time, but like really think about it. The five people that you spend the most time with is who you really will become. Because even though we'd like to think that we're all like so strong 
and we're so strong-willed that we can do our own thing despite everyone around us, what they're telling us, it makes it a lot harder. So for instance, instead of being with people who maybe are comfortable with mediocrity, if they see you working really hard, these are the things that they're always gonna be telling you. They're gonna be saying like, why do you work so much? Why don't you take time off? Why don't you take vacations? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm not saying that taking time off or vacations is a bad thing. I actually take quite a bit of time off, at least in my opinion, but I'd rather have people around me that are motivating me and understand why I'm working so hard because it's just gonna be so much easier. Like business is already super hard in itself. We have to work all the time. If you're still out in the field, you have to like work extremely hard physically. And then you also have to work hard mentally as far as being a business owner. And if you're exhausted, it's gonna be so much harder to not to listen to people if they're a negative influence in your ear. And I'm not saying anything bad about these people because they say it with love. They're saying it from their lens and perspective of basically how life should be. Like, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. Like you need balance and all these things. But here's the thing. If you spend time with successful people, they actually say the opposite. They're happy in what they do. They don't need balance per se. They don't need balance. They just need to accomplish their goals and that is what fulfills them, okay? So start spending time with people who are fulfilled through career advancement and through work and are good and in contracting businesses and you will be surprised just by spending time with them how much that will influence you and your own business all right number three is don't worry about actually investing and what do i mean by that a lot of people they think oh hey like i finally have a little bit of success maybe you have like ten thousand saved up or twenty thousand saved up or thirty thousand um i hate to burst your bubble and i'm not trying to be mean but that's really like no money at all in the grand scheme of things um, and I'm not saying that in a mean way, cause trust me, I literally did the same exact thing. Like the first time that I had 20K in my bank account, I was like shocked and in awe. Like I was so happy and you should be proud of yourself that you did that. But here's a mistake that most people make. They think that once they have a relatively small amount of money that all of a sudden they have to stop all the progress they're making. And now they have to go learn how to invest. So they start looking up, like they start learning, like, how do I invest in real estate? How do I invest in stocks? Um, how do I do all this stuff? And what I would caution you against is basically think of it in a best case scenario. Okay, if you have like, let's just call it even a decent sum of money, 50,000, and the best case scenario that you're gonna make on that is let's just say 20%. Okay, if you make 20% on your investing, you did pretty dang good. And so if you take that 50,000 and you make 20% on it, that basically means that you made $10,000 basically of extra money that you wouldn't have made if you did not invest that. And so I'm not saying investing is bad. All I'm saying is when we're trying to do something as hard as like growing a contracting business or growing um, whatever you're trying to do, any focus that's taken away from that specific task at hand is going to basically distract you oh, no. from where you could have been. If you would have taken that same amount of time that you invested into like learning how to be a really good investor, and just literally spent that on basically like number one, what we're talking about, which is like learning how to acquire skills that will increase your income, then you would make a lot more money. Like say for instance, if you buy with your 50,000, a $20,000 mentorship program, and then you go to like five in-person events through the year, and you're telling me that you can't make $10,000 more of income the next year. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if I did that, which I've done stuff similar to that, and my income literally went up, I think one year I made like $80,000 in my contracting business. I think that was year three, and I saved up like 20K in my account, and I was doing really good, and then I, I literally used that, and I paid other people that had good knowledge, kind of like number one, and I took my income from like 80,000 all the way up, I think it was like 140,000, or pretty close. So like, if you really think about it, I learned the skills and now I gotta make that money over and over and over again. So sorry if this sounds a little bit repetitive, um, but the key thing is don't, stop worrying about investing or like basically little side hustles or whatever you wanna call it. Focus on the one thing, get really good at it, and that will serve you the best over the long run. All right, number four is stop blaming other people for your own circumstances. I mean, how many times do we hear contractors, and you might be one of them, I'm not saying you are, but I certainly was for a while, how many times do we hear contractors where they say, oh, my employees suck, the market sucks, you know, where I live, everything sucks, my customers are cheap, yada, yada, yada. I've even had certain people come up and tell me, they say the only reason that I'm successful is because I'm white, okay? And so 
whatever your excuse is in life, and I'm not trying to downplay whatever life circumstances you have going on, I also know people that literally are going through like say stage three or stage four cancer and are still able to be successful in their lives. Okay, so all I'm saying is if you are basically blaming others for your own circumstances, it's basically gonna give you an excuse, you're not gonna work as hard and you're not gonna actually seek to fix the problem because that's kind of how we are as people, right? It's a lot easier to say, oh, the reason I'm not successful is because my market sucks or because this sucks. And then what it does is it gives us an excuse. We don't have to work as hard. And in reality, if you look in the mirror and say, okay, even under bad situations, what can I personally affect? Like me as the business owner, that will open up your eyes and your brain and be open to all the different types of solutions that you may have been missing all along. And so I read a book and the book is called Extreme Ownership. And that was definitely something that totally revolutionized the way that I saw my life and my business. Not that I was ever like a very big person into the whole like blame thing, but I still used to blame like certain things on other people or circumstances. And ever since I read that book, it completely changed the way that I see life. And now it makes it so much easier to take control of your life. Because here's the thing that the cool thing is, if you blame yourself for your life, that also means that you're saying that you have the power to get yourself out. So think about that. I'm not saying just all woe is you and like, you know, get you all depressed and saying that you suck. But the cool thing is, if you blame yourself, then you know that you're at fault. Then you also know that if you change whatever it is that you're doing, you can get yourself out of it. Okay, so stop blaming others for your circumstances and things will start getting much better. All right, number five is going over risk tolerance. And what do I mean by that? There's a quote that I saw that, or that I heard, I should say, that I really liked and I forget who it was from, but they said, I'd rather be a millionaire guaranteed in 10 years than have a low probability of being a millionaire each year. When I say like a low probability, I'm saying like a 10% chance. Because here's the thing that rich people understand that a lot of poor people really don't, is no matter how big of a number you are, let's just say all of a sudden you grow your business up to doing $2 million or $3 million a year. If you take on a lot of risk, no matter how big you are, anything multiplied by zero is still zero. Okay, and also keep in mind, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. So what a lot of super successful people in general, not just contractors do, is they make very calculated decisions and they also make sure that they're always taking into consideration risk. And so the thing is that a lot of people, especially young people, they are always trying to say, oh, in two years, I wanna literally like quadruple my income, which I'm not saying that that's not possible, but all I'm saying is it would be better to have each quarter of your life get like five to 10% better. If you're like, man, in the next three months, how can I make myself, my business say 5% better? 5% doesn't sound very fun, but if you do that and you stack that up over time, like think of it like a snowball, the snowball when you're rolling down the hill is like this, right? And then you roll it and then it's like this and it's like this. And then each time the snowball rolls and gets 5% bigger, by the time that you get to the very bottom of the hill, which might be like a five year time horizon, you're like, holy crap, I have a massive snowball. And so the thing is, it's not always about going from zero to 100 extremely fast. Sometimes it's just going from like zero to five to 10 to 15. And if you're into baseball, think of it like a baseball analogy. Sometimes it's better instead of going for the grand slam to go just for like the easy single or double. I'm sorry, like I'm not a baseball player, but that's just kind of what came to my mouth. But hopefully that makes sense. Um, just make sure that when you're growing, not saying it's bad to grow fast, but make sure that you're always taking into consideration risk. So that way, any progress that you are making, you don't go all the way back down to zero. You want to keep what you have and not lose it uh, first and foremost. All right, that's all that I had for this video. If you liked it, please give me a like and a subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.